The Romans used lead to make water pipes, bringing fresh water into cities to fill up their bathhouses and to drink. They used lead pots to cook in, even saying that fruit syrup tasted better if it was cooked in lead pots as opposed to copper. Everyone knows nowadays that lead is poisonous. People with lead poisoning can become anemic, cognitively impaired, infertile and can incur some serious organ damage. But did the Romans know this? Did they do anything about it? And did lead poisoning cause the collapse of the Roman Empire? Lead wasn't actually mined by the Romans for its own sake, but as a byproduct for mining silver. Silver was then processed into things like coins to make important payments, especially to the Roman army. Pliny the Elder writes about this process. When submitted to the action of fire, part of the ore precipitates itself in the form of lead whilst the silver is left floating on the surface, like oil on water. Mining the ore and processing it into lead and silver was terrible for the health of the slaves involved. The Romans knew this, but often didn't care. Vitruvius, a Roman architect, wrote that the workers in lead, who are of a pallid colour, for in casting lead, the fumes from it and the daily burning destroy the vigour of their blood. It was a small price to pay for the lead pipes and silver coins. The elite of the empire, people like Pliny the Elder and Vitruvius, only cared about the end product. The Romans, the industrious people they were, mined and processed lead at levels never before seen. By smelting lead, the Romans unknowingly released lead into the atmosphere which was preserved in snow that was eventually compacted into ice in the Arctic regions. Scientists have taken core samples of this ice from the Roman period and found atmospheric lead concentrations comparable to the early Industrial Revolution. Not only were Romans smelting lead, but it was making its way into their bones. Analysis from human bones over time shows that Romans were exposed to deadly amounts of lead. Not just the poor slaves who were forced to mine and smelt the stuff, but everyday people who drank from lead pipes and cooked with lead pots. Many Roman aqueducts were lined with lead, but the Roman nobility said that they preferred to drink water from clay pipes. Vitruvius said, Water conducted through earthen pipes is more wholesome than through lead. Indeed, that conveyed in lead must be injurious, because from it lead carbonate is obtained, and this is said to be injurious to the human system. So, there you have it. The Romans knew lead was dangerous, yet nothing seems to be done about it. Roman aqueducts were still lined with lead, even though clay pipes were preferable, and lead pipes were still extremely common. Perhaps we should look at it like this. We know that microplastics are dangerous to humans and the ecosystem we inhabit, yet we still use plastics in almost everything. We consume food and drink of plastic products, and we pollute the earth with plastic waste. We know this is bad, but many of us don't care enough to fix the problem, root and stem. The Romans knew that lead was bad for them, but didn't care enough to stop using it. But actually, lead-lined aqueducts and lead pipes probably didn't give Romans lead poisoning. First of all, the water moved quickly over the lead, leaving little time for the lead to properly dissolve into the water. Secondly, the water transported in the aqueducts and pipes contained dissolved minerals and acids. These would react with the lead, producing lead carbonate. When it built up, lead carbonate was actually very similar to calcium carbonate, which has a much more common name, limescale. Therefore, Roman aqueducts and lead pipes after a few years could be covered in the lead carbonate, protecting the end user from lead poisoning. I said earlier that the Romans were being poisoned by lead, so where is this lead coming from, if not from lead pipes and aqueducts? The Romans loved using lead cooking pots. Fruit syrup features in many Roman recipes. It was added to bad and expired wine to give it a final lease of life. It was used in desserts and in savoury dishes to add a touch of sweetness. Cato the Elder wrote in his book about agriculture why you should use a lead cooking vessel. The vessels themselves in which the thickened and boiled down syrup is boiled should be of lead rather than brass. For in the boiling, Brazen vessels throw off copper rust and spoil the flavour of the preservative. So hilariously, Cato recommends that you boil down acidic fruit in a lead vessel, infusing the syrup with deadly amounts of lead. Better to do this than taste the copper rust. So the Romans were consuming unhealthy amounts of lead because they preferred to cook with lead pots. Did lead cause the collapse of the Roman Empire? 
Although the Romans used lead to line their aqueducts and in pipes, the build-up of limescale-like lead carbonate meant that most Romans weren't actually exposed to deadly amounts of lead from their water. Moreover, aqueducts mainly provided water for baths, rather than for drinking. What did get the Romans, however, was the use of lead cooking pots to make fruit syrup. This syrup was added to recipes to sweeten up dishes. Most deadly was when it was added to bad wine. This wine wasn't drunk by Rome's leaders. They drank the finest vintages, unadulterated by fruit syrups. It was the poor that were forced to drink the wine containing this deadly lead-infused fruit syrup, hence why Roman bones contain an unhealthy amount of lead in them. But this didn't cause the collapse of the Roman Empire, as some people have mistakenly claimed. The Roman Empire collapsed through a combination of military defeats, mass invasions, civil war, political apathy, climate change, plague, pestilence, and so on. Whilst lead poisoning didn't help the Romans, it certainly didn't cause the collapse of their empire.